Hello and welcome to Gardening of 58 North. So in this video I'd like to show you my results from grafting two dahlias together. So what I'll be showing you here is a variety of garden dahlia, which is this pink one on the left, which is called Café Au Late. Normally the, um, the coloration varies from that kind of kind of light creamy pink color to a deep pink color it does vary quite a lot naturally and it's going to be grafted on top of a tree dahlia called dahlia imperialis so all the dahlias in the front garden apart from two of them are just growing on their own rootstock so I'll show you the grafted ones now the idea behind this graft is dahlia imperialis is a very tall vigorous tree dahlia it can grow up to four or five meters in height and it's got a very strong vigorous root system so the hope is it gives the, the plant extra vigor and you'll get maybe larger flowers and, and better growth so this is the third or fourth year I've been doing this often I don't get them to flower the reason being not because the tree dahlia seems to influence the flowering because naturally the tree dahlia would flower very late the garden dahlia seems to flower when it would normally the thing is I do the grafts early in spring and then they take a while to take and they're so by the time that they're actually established and fully growing on the root system they don't tend to be big enough to flower so they flower very late in the year so I'd probably better grafting them in winter if I had the opportunity but in my climate that's quite difficult so here's one of the grafts this is the most striking one I'd say because it's high up so this is as I say grafted on a tree dahlia and this is double grafted so that basically I've grafted this in two places so there's two separate grafts what it is, is this grew in my garden last year to about three meters in height, the original tree dahlia. You can see the, the trunk on it there. It's quite thick and sturdy. I have got bamboo canes on it now, but to be honest, it was supporting itself for most of the summer. I've only put on these extra bamboo canes now that it's autumn and the winds are starting to get quite strong. So you can see there's a branch that comes off on the left here and then it grafts and there's a branch that comes off on the right and it grafts. So I'll just come in close now and try and get you a better view of these grafted sections. So on the left here, we can see we have the graft and it's just at that point there and then on the right hand side the graft is quite difficult to see but it's right inside there as well so the grafts do take really well actually so these are both dahlias but they're not dahlias that are very closely related so I was quite surprised how well they do take from grafts the grafts secure really well and you get a very strong graft that lasts for a long time as an example of how long they last this dahlia down here is now in its second year of being grafted and I find that if you overwinter them in a frost free location the, the upper se section of the, the foliage stays alive so you can keep the stems year after year and that's what I did with this one. So it was grafted last year, it grew a reasonable size but didn't flower because it was grafted too late. This year though because it was already grafted a year ago it started growing quite early in spring and so we have had flowers. Now this plant was double the size but unfortunately what's happened is half of it has snapped off in the wind. So that is one issue that I found with the grafts is although the grafts take very well and it doesn't snap at the grafts, when it does resprout in spring, it often resprouts with a bit too many shoots. So you can see here, this section here is the, the bit where the uh, Café Lake Late Dahlia is and the grafts is the graft is actually around about this section here it's hard to show because it's gone all woody now and there's not much difference between the two with the wood but you can see probably there is a very slight line along here and that's the line between the two grafts when it sprouted in spring it had loads and loads of shoots coming up they were too congested so they grew very leggy and thin and then when they got older the, the weight became quite heavy on the branches but the lower branches stayed quite thin and they just snapped off so unfortunately that is one side effect but I think with the correct pruning that could probably be overcome so when it comes to the growth of the plants I haven't found unfortunately much benefit I think the only benefit I have found is a bit of drought tolerance so I find in dry spells my other dahlias quite often wilted in hot sunny weather these grafted dahlias didn't seem to wilt at all that they've got a much bigger root system and so they're going to be able to find the water more easily so that seems to be one advantage and the other advantage is they do seem to be well fed and they're good color I find with the Café Au Lake Dahlias so for example this one this is a weaker plant this one on the left the weaker plants I find you tend to get more of a creamy color and quite a light bloom like this one here and then the more richly fed plants and the more vigorous plants such as this one here that's why the dahlias are starting to flop out over now I think its blooms are a bit big and, and floppy for its stems but you can see you get a much deeper color a much deeper pink color I find with the decafia late if they're well fed and vigorous and I have found that with the flowers on this one 
they do tend to have more of that dark color. This one is fading now because it's quite an old bloom, but you get more of that dark color on it, and it does have very nice blooms. And when it comes to the amount of flowers, I don't know if there's any difference. There is a lot of side branches coming up. You can see there's a huge number of blooms going to come on this, but I do find that similar with my other caffeine late dahlias. So what I'll be doing is I will be overwintering these again as a whole plant, not just a tuber. You can in fact see at the bottom here, they do send up a lot of suckers from the root system. This is the tree dahlia root system coming up and there'll be lots of large tubers. So it will overwinter quite well. They still produce a good amount of tubers as I say, you can't grow them from the tubers because they're grafted. So I just keep them in soil in a pot over winter, just slowly ticking over just enough temperature that they don't completely go dormant and die back. So they seem to do quite well. The only other issue I do find is that you get a bit of mottling on the foliage, almost a bit like a magnesium deficiency, although it isn't a magnesium deficiency. I'm not sure what that is. It tends to be on the newer growth in the summertime. And as the foliage matures, what tends to happen is it goes darker and that disappears. So I've not figured out what that is that's causing that. It might be something to do with the graft. Maybe the graft isn't transferring a certain nutrients as well, or perhaps the root system absorbs all the nutrients in the right ratios for a tree dahlia but it doesn't have the right ratio of nutrients for a garden dahlia so maybe it's lacking something a little bit for the garden dahlia but even though it has that weird coloration it still has vigorous growth and it grows very well so as i say there's not a lot of advantages i've found unfortunately it doesn't seem to give it a huge amount more vigor maybe moderately but to be honest i've got other dahlias in this bed which have grown just as well and some that have grown worse so it's hard to say and the other thing which i think has the most potential is just getting a very tall dahlia looking like a tree so what i might try and do in the future is try and get some really tall tr tree dahlias one summer overwinter them at full size and then the next summer graft on the garden dahlias on top of them and then we can have a giant tree with dahlia flowers on it so you can see for this one for example is over two meters tall a really nice height no flowers this year yet you can see it's just starting to bud at the top unfortunately we have a storm with 60 mile an hour winds coming this week so i'm going to have to take these inside and finish them for the year otherwise they will probably get blown over as they're getting quite top heavy but the good thing with the tree daily is it does have very strong stems and they can get a lot thicker than this one currently is so they will become very strong and sturdy and they it will be able to support that massive weight as they mature so that's the plan anyway maybe get a several meter high tree with large flowering dahlias on it you can see this one for example down here the stem now is two years old you can see really how thick and woody it becomes it becomes really like a shrub or a tree that's never going to break off these these kind of annual shoots that are coming up from the the normal garden dahlia they will probably snap off in the wind and you can see several of them have but the original trunk and where the graft is taken i don't think any amount of wind will break that so it's going to be completely solid so that's another advantage potentially if you can avoid the it breaking off just above the graft so that's about all for this video just a quick update i have tried this with another type of dahlia a few years ago another garden dahlia i had similar results it grew quite well the graft took no problem and it didn't seem to have any massive advantage in vigor or anything like that unfortunately so that's about it for this video i'll keep doing these experiments as I say, it doesn't really give the vigor I was hoping for. It doesn't give you giant plants or giant flowers, but it does give you an interesting plant like this one here. Just a shame I can't show you this one in flower because we're coming to the end of the season, but hopefully next year. So that's all for this video. I'll see you next year. Hopefully I'll have some more unusual grafted dahlias by then.